The Audio Boy Project. A decentralized anti-authoritarian based initiative focused on creating a library of audiobooks for truth seekers and free speech advocates. All content on this channel is free to download, share, and repost. Your support is much appreciated. Truth, audiobooks, for the people. Operation Gladio, the unholy alliance between the Vatican, the CIA, and the Mafia, by Paul L. Williams, Ph.D., narrated by Michael Pritchard. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruits you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes? or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruits, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Matthew chapter 7 verses 15 through 23. Apologia. I know what you're thinking. The author of this book must be a Baptist. It's a common assumption. Most Welsh people are Baptists, and Williams is a Welsh name. But names are deceptive. I was born and raised a Roman Catholic. My parish was St. John the Baptist Church in West Scranton, where I learned by rote the Baltimore Catechism and sang Panis Angelicus with the choir. I wrote J.M.J., Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, on the right-hand corner of my composition papers, went to confession every Saturday afternoon, and received Holy Communion at Sunday Mass. I participated in all the rites and rituals, the forty-hour devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, the recitation of the litanies to the saints, and the yearly novenas at St. Anne's Basilica. In those Tridentine days the liturgy was in Latin which gave the Mass a sense of timelessness and the assurance that the teachings of Holy Mother Church were semper eadem, always the same, binding the generations in one system of belief. I had my throat blessed on the Feast of St. Blaise and my forehead anointed with ashes on the first day of Lent. I wore a St. Christopher's medal and a scapular. I fasted and abstained on the days appointed and received all the sacraments, save holy orders and extreme unction. As a graduate student at Drew University, my mentor was Father Gabriel Colas, an Augustinian monk, who provided rigorous instruction in the patristics and medieval Latin. After receiving my doctorate, I taught religion and the humanities at the University of Scranton, a Jesuit institution, and served as the editor of the annual proceedings of the Fellowship of Catholic Scholars. I also penned a number of articles on Vatican II and the effects of aggiornamento for National Review, where I met William Buckley, the celebrated CIA spook. I encountered the wrath of Rome while writing everything you always wanted to know about the Catholic Church for Doubleday. Doubleday, at that time, was a publishing outlet for the Catholic Church through its imprint, Image Books, and an imprimatur was considered a prerequisite for publication. My clerical overseers found no fault with my handling of the evolution of doctrine and the matter of the pontiffs who later were decried as heretics. The problem arose with the subject of the Church's temporalities. I was told to expunge all references to the Vatican Bank, including the donation of Mussolini, 
the Ambrosiano affair, and the P2 scandal. These topics had garnered headlines throughout the world, and to exclude them from a book with a tell-all title would be an act of obsequiousness that bordered on cowardice. I refused to make the suggested cuts and was supported in my decision by Patricia Cosman, my intrepid editor. In 1990, the work was published by Doubleday without a nihil obstat, the declaration that nothing about the work is contrary to the faith, despite the fact that it contained no canonical errata. In subsequent years, I probed deeper into the affairs of Vatican Incorporated during my tenure as the editor and publisher of the Metro, and as a consultant, CI9, for the FBI. My findings, including the ties between the Vatican and Gambino crime family, constituted the core of The Vatican Exposed, Money, Murder, and the Mafia, which was published by Prometheus in 2001. For the past 14 years, I have been engaged in combing all available government records regarding the Vatican, the CIA, and the Mafia. The task has been grueling, since most of the files, even the files of Pope Paul VI, Michel Sindona, Roberto Calvi, Archbishop Paul Marcinkus, and other individuals long dead, remain classified. Any disclosure of their contents would represent a threat to national security. Fortunately, enough information has come to light in recent years that listeners can obtain a complete account of the unholy alliance of Gladio. Am I still a Catholic? Suffice it to say, anyone who attempts to come to terms with the facts presented in this audiobook will have his faith in Holy Mother Church compromised, if not shattered. Truth or fiction? <laughs> <laughs>